So here is the market review for May 29th, 2024. And as always, we're going to start with the stock indices. So today was actually a action packed day for me. I ended up being negative on the day in my own personal trading. Um, right now I'm doing a prop firm account. So actually let's show you. I'm doing a top step account. So I have a $50,000 account. I ended up being negative 240 on the day. I was as low as around negative 600 on the day. And then I ended up getting the scalp that we'll cover in the PM session in NASDAQ that um, paid around $400 and brought me to 239. And then I have another account, which is at, so it's the 150, 150K challenge account. And right now I'm up 4,600. I did have a equity high of 5,400. So that is why I have the loss here. So it was a loss of 773, but it was as low as 1,300 on the day. And then that same trade in NASDAQ, I also took on this account and got it back to uh, seven in the drawdown. So it was a negative day and it wasn't due to the model not working, rather just me not executing properly as we're going to cover. So a little frustrating on that end. However, on to the next day, can't carry one bad day into another bad day and allow it to be a string of bad days. It's okay to have one bad day. It's okay to have one bad trade, but we don't let that one bad trade or one bad day turn into a string of bad trades or bad days. But let's get into the review. So first, we're just going to look at the ES. Let's go to the daily chart. Take this off and let's put the key levels on. Oh, I'm on the wrong chart. ESM. All right, there we go. So now we have the daily levels. Let's delete some of these lines. And then this should be on the four hour chart. So this is how I like to draw all of my levels based off what time frame it's on. I just go to the settings and only allow it to show on that time frame or anything lower. So like, for example, I just was on a four hour balance price range. It's only going to show on the four hour chart or anything lower. But yesterday I was talking about how I'm still bullish until we start to see a little bit more on, I mean, bullish until we start to see a little bit more on the downside. However, what would fully confirm that bullishness was if we close through mean threshold of the up close candle right here. So right now this is a bearish order block and you can see yesterday we hit mean threshold and I was seeing if today wanted to close through that. However, we can see that we started to reject off of that. We've had a down close day pretty much. And then tomorrow, so if I go put the news on, Tomorrow, we have unemployment cl claims. This is like the news of the week. So if that news event in like that session is in sync and we start to trade lower, then we're probably bearish and we're going to seek lower prices and potentially get into this imbalance down here. And then that can be the end of quarter two because we are going into June. So we do have um, the contract starting in probably the second or third week of June. So let's take this off. Let's go to a 12 hour chart. So we had this 12 hour and not why, why I called it BPR 12 hour bearish reclaimed order block. So remember on that daily chart, I measured the range from the low to the high that's in the last 20 days. This is 20 to 30% of that range. And then we have this 12 hour, um, if order block, when we traded lower, then we traded through it, it failed. And then we closed through it again went up, we did close outside of it again. So now that we've closed through it for the third time, if we are bearish, then this level needs to hold. So then if we drop down to a four hour chart, we had this balance price range right here. And this is what I was looking at this morning. So right here on this candle, we opened here. I wanted to see if price was going to trade as high as up to here. And then do we trade through it or do we reject and go lower? However, price did not even have the strength to go higher. It just created another imbalance. And then during the AM session, we hit that imbalance right here with this wick. So let's delete that real quick. With that wick, we hit that and then went lower. Let's delete that. There we go. So that is what I'm looking at for ES in terms of a longer time frame um, bias. To see Thursday, Friday. So we have two more days left of the week. Do we hit this and go lower? Do we trade lower? 
reject after we take out this sell side and then start to trade higher. And then the third final scenario is we just rip through this level, get above here, and then maybe Friday or even Thursday p.m. session if it's a really bullish 8.30 news announcement, then we can start to see it trade higher. So that's really what I'm looking at. That's why we're looking at the key levels. It's hard to kind of analysis because you don't know how London, Asia, and the pre-New York session is going to trade and know exactly where we're at because depending on where you're at, at the 9.30 opening or at 8.30, if there's news event there, then that can really shift your bias for the day. But that is what I'm looking at. That's the levels I'm looking at for the S&P. And then let's go to intraday chart and see what we did. So we pretty much consolidated all day. The market's being held in this range for that 8.30 news event. Remember I said that event is the heavy news for the week. So pretty much every week there's going to be that one news event that's like the heavy for the week. And sometimes the market will hold it and stay in the consolidation until that news event hits the market and then they'll allow it to trade more freely. So today you clearly only had to be a scalper. You couldn't really be a day trader today due to the consolidation in the economic news calendar. So there's not really too much to go over. The only thing we're going to do is go over um, trades that I took. So this is the first trade that I took. And what was I looking at? We have the lunch lows right here. And then price failed to make a lower low. But in NASDAQ right here, price did not fail to make a lower low. Let me take this off. Price or price did make a lower low in NASDAQ and price did not make a lower low in the S&P 500. So therefore we have SMT right there. Clearly a change in the state of delivery when we close above these down close candles. So then if we go back to the S&P, also closing above the down close candles, change in the state of delivery. Go to a one minute chart. We have this bullish breaker right here and then measure the range from low to high and price gets into this fair value gap right here. Boom. So let me take the executions off real quick. So we have our range. This is a discount fair value gap. So once price hits that right there, boom, we have this up close candle. I was treating this like a bullish order block right there. And then going to the execution tab. Now you can see why I entered on this candle right here. As soon as we tap the order block, I entered. My stop loss was below this low. And then clearly I was stopped out with the very next one minute candle. Pretty quick stop out. Now, why was this trade a loss? Because remember I said earlier, yeah, today was a losing day. However, it wasn't a losing day due to the model not failing. It was rather me not executing the model properly. So if you are trying to learn this model, the Omni model, then you'll realize more times than not when you do take a loss, it's due to error on the human part. So human error is usually the fault for the losses. So what did I do wrong in this case? So if we go back to the five minute chart, move that we have divergence or SMT here with it failing to make a lower low. Then we have this high here and we do make equal highs right here. So normally based off ICT teachings, equal highs, very easy pool liquidity price probably wants to go through that. However, if we look at the body, so now what's the highest close right here? So not this candle because we opened up here, the highest close right here. And then notice the bodies don't trade through it, right? However, if we go to the NASDAQ and we measure the bodies, very small, but you can tell we do close above the body. So that is a body v body SMT. So that's one of the SMTs that I teach in the Omni model course. Once again, completely for free if you haven't looked at that course yet. So there goes your SMT there. So one of the filters that we talk about in the course is that if you are between two divergences, then the trade is nullified. So in this case, if we go back to the SMP, we have divergence between here and between here. So now if we measure the range from low to high, and then let's delete this. So now we have that range from low to high before we get this entry, we've clearly traded back to a premium. So because there's SMT, you don't know which way the market wants to go. It could have used this divergence and went higher, or it could use this divergence reverse and go lower like it did here. So because of that, and because I've already 
like I know this. It just was an error on my part. So that's why it was a little bit frustrating to take this loss. However, you learn from it, keep it pushing, and you don't take it, you don't carry it over to the next day. So that is why this trade was a loss trading between two divergences, which is a high indication of low probability when you're doing that. And then also you can look at the whole day. This entire day has been low probability. So then, boom, you have that. So that's the trade I took in. That is loser number one of the day. I think I took four or five losses. Crazy amount. But yeah, I think I took like four with one winner. So that was the one of the losers of the day. Then if we go to the NASDAQ. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. But I definitely took a trade in the NASDAQ. Hmm. Maybe it was an NQ. Wow, I didn't even realize I toggled it back off. I'm looking for the executions. Here we go. So look how the market's just range bounding. So I bought here and then I ended up getting out up here. So this was actually the one winner of the day. And now why did I take this trade? If we delete these levels and then let's also delete the higher time frame levels. So we have the low of the PM session here and then NASDAQ fails to make a lower low right there. And then on top of that, oh, and one thing I know I'm going back, back and forth. The other reason why this trade was a loser, so going back to the S&P, why this trade was a loser, not only do we have MT here with the bodies, but if you look, we have the high at 155, fail to make a higher high here at 205, and then in NASDAQ, we do make the higher high. So we have SMT up there and we have SMT here. So another reason why this was a loser. But going back to the this trade, fails to make a lower low, but in the S&P, it clearly makes a lower low. So there goes your divergence there. And then dropping down to a one minute chart after the divergence, we clearly have a market structure shift right here. Why am I picking this high? Because it is between this fair value gap and it hits consequent encroachment of this gap. So that is a intermediate term high. This is also an intermediate term high because we have a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. So market structure shift in the S&P, but the S&P is showing to be a little bit weaker in this fractal of time. So not necessarily the entire day, but in this fractal of time, it's showing to be weaker by making the lower low. So then we go to NASDAQ and we have our shift in market structure here in NASDAQ. And same thing, swing high within the fair value gap that hits at least 50% of the range in the fair value gap. So we have that. And then lastly, if we measure, so this is the targeted high. Why am I picking this high and not this high? Because remember we had that divergence here. So we had, we had here. And then let's do SMT. Let's make it a little bit thicker. So we had the divergence right here. So that is why I'm going to pick this high to measure my range. So from high to the SMT low, find 20 to 30% of the range. Where's MM? There we go. 20 to 30% of the range right here. And then we have a breaker because we take out this swing high, go lower to take out this swing low. So these up close candles are a breaker right there. So we have a breaker right there. And then lastly, before this retracement, we haven't hit equilibrium or any imbalance any because we had SMT. So if price was to, let's say it traded all the way higher and took out this high, filled in this imbalance and then retraced, I wouldn't be able to take that trade because we have divergence here and we already we came to a premium. Same thing that we had here. We had that divergence up here and down here, but we had already came to a premium. So when I took the long here in the S and P, I shouldn't have done that because we've already came to a premium. However, in this scenario, we haven't came to equilibrium yet. We haven't came to that premium. So now on this retracement, I can take a long here expecting price to trade back up into a premium. So now after the breaker right here, I did make one mistake. And the one mistake I made was to find the range that I was looking at. I drew my fib from this low to this high. And you'll see this in the execution video. I might have started it a little bit late. I don't remember, but I might have started it once I was already in the trade. However, what I was looking at was this range right here. The reason why I picked this low was we took out that low, but the body's on trade below it. So I was measuring from this low to this high and we had equilibrium right here. 
and I was like, okay, optimal trade down here. However, I wasn't looking at this breaker at the time. So what I was looking at was just the shift in market structure and then price dropped down into here. And then I noticed that we had a breaker here. So instead of using this swing right here on the one minute chart, I can drop down to a 15 second chart and we have a swing low outside the breaker range. So now the range that I can use is from this low to this high. And then you can clearly see we have optimal trade entry. So where I should have entered that was right here or right under this low right there to fill in this imbalance because we're in a balanced price range. These imbalances that we traded through creating uh, more imbalances, that's a balanced price range. So as soon as price takes out this swing low and starts to trade into the imbalances, I can enter right there with a stop loss right here. However, I didn't see that at the time because I was looking at the one minute chart and then I quickly realized. So then when price made this gap right here, all I did was measure from this low to this high. As soon as it came back to equilibrium, I got in on the trade and I just had my stop loss here. And then my targets were based off of this fractal though. I wasn't using this fractal because this was just like another pyramid entry. Rather, this was the main entry that I should have had. So then all I did was find standard deviations from the wicks and the bodies. And then let's delete this. Find the very first standard deviation that is at least a two to one R. So we have two to one R here. So the first standard deviation is gonna be right here, which is why I closed out the trade there. Now you're gonna see in the execution video, as I was doing the standard deviations, price was moving so fast. because This is a 15 second chart. So when I first enter any trade, I automatically set the stop loss and take profit at two to one. And then as price starts to move in my favor, because I have to wait for these swing lows to be made so for me to draw the fib on the um, retracement tool. But just to make sure I have levels locked in in case price wants to do it all in one second and jump, I can get out the trade where I want to get out at or near where I want to get out at. I always automatically set take profit at two to one stop loss where the stop loss should be. So I had my take profit here and I was trying to do the standard deviations and I realized I really wanted to be here, but price was so close to it that I was, I had to do it basically on a market order because I only had a um, sell limit one when I was in for two contracts. I only had a sell limit of one here. So the last one I had to get out on a market order. And then because I was doing it, if you ever traded top step before and tried to do the trade of eight group trade, you have to place the trades in trade of eight itself. You can't do it on the, like if you want the copy trading to work, if you're only trading one account, then you can do it on trading view. So I had to get out this trade quickly, like flip my to the other account and then get out that trade. So you might see that in the execution video. If I don't edit it out, depending on how good it looks on the screen, I'm not sure if I captured it or not. So that was it for the NASDAQ trade and that's it for stock indices. Now let's go over to crude or actually let's we're going to crude oil for last because that was where I did a lot of damage to myself this morning. So let's go, let's look at the dollar and I haven't even looked at the dollar yet today. So right on schedule, like how we said yesterday, we were expecting the dollar to be bullish. This is nice to have. And the reason why we were expecting bullishness was this overall bigger market maker model. So remember, we come down into this order block, rally up higher. We have a balanced price range here. I'll go into it, consolidate a little bit, rally up higher. We have this reclaimed order block. Extend that out. We hit it there. We hit it here, but then we hit it again here for reclaimed accumulation. Trade back above this breaker. Come back into the breaker. Rally higher. We have the swing. We don't close outside the fair value gap. So ideally, we want to see it start to push higher from here. We want to really see closure above these up close candles. If that happens, we can treat that like a bullish order block. And hopefully the dollar can see some momentum going for these highs and these highs. And ultimately this high and getting into this imbalance right here. So that is what I'm looking at for the dollar. And then let's see what intraday price action did so let's delete this real quick so that is the order block remember that we want to see be formed so let's delete that looking at a five minute chart let's put our session indicator on so we have the asian range london new york london close 
So we have this gap right here. So every time we have a new day opening gap, you want to map that out because that's going to be significant in price. So what do I see when I look at the dollar right now? I see that we ran out the Asian range lows right here, ran that out for sell side liquidity, went up higher, the order block that we made after running it out. So let's change this to a gap. The order block that we made after running that out was right here. We come down to that order block, not the best time of day. So because it's not the best time of day, it's going to retrace one more time. Comes back down in two. Now this is a propulsion block. Falls just short of the gap. So let's get that all the way. Falls just short of the gap, hits the propulsion block, and then we start to rally higher from there. So now let's see if the Omni model occurred. So what I'm going to do is first, we're going to see if there was any divergence. So this is what I do every day when I'm looking at a market that I wasn't trading. So in terms of divergence, Euro doesn't make a higher high with its wicks, but with the bodies, Euro does make a higher high with the bodies. The dollar fails to make a lower low with its body. So these lows don't go below the body lows right here. However, on the Euro dollar, the bodies do close above. You see that? So then let's see if there was any shift in market structure and then return back to a premium fair value gap. So I don't see. So this swing low is not within 50% of that fair value gap. This swing low is. So when we take out this swing low, that is a shift in market structure right there. So you have a shift in market structure right there. Do we have it in the dollar? Yes, we do right here. We have shift in market structure right there. Then is this a breaker? Yes, it is. We have a breaker right here because we take out these lows, go lower, and then we have this high right here. So this is a breaker right there. So because that's a breaker, you can use the one minute chart. We can drop down to even a 15 second chart. First swing high is right here. So we have this swing high. Measure from low to high optimal trade entry with equilibrium right here. So as soon as we you can enter at the low end of the breaker, you can enter right at this high. You can enter at optimal trade entry. The choice is yours. So let's say we entered right here. Stop loss would have been here right there. First profit would be a two to one R. So boom, there goes the Omni model scalping version. In Forex, however, remember how I was telling you yesterday, Forex is not the most uh, scalping friendly because of the spread. See, right now the spread is one and a half pips. So um, let's see, right now we're at 57. So one and a half pips, you would have to put your stop loss at 58.7. So your stop loss should be here, but which spread you have to put your stop loss all the way at 58.7 because of the spread. And then also because of the spread, you're not going to get in for another one and a half. So 54, that would be 53.3, 53.3. So now what should have been a two to one scalp is now a 0.61 risk to reward ratio of the spread in Forex. Now, what can you, what can you do? Um, what's the word to basically a spread? One thing that you can do is only do market orders. So if you only do market orders, then you can account for the stop loss hoping. Now, when I say this, that doesn't mean do not put a stop loss. What I'm saying is you would have your stop loss all the way up here just in case, but you're watching the market. As soon as it hits this level, you hit the market order execution, but you want to have this just in case it jumps up. So now, yes, you'll take a little bit bigger loss with your risk, like let's say you're willing to risk $200, but you're basing your risk based off of here. So if there was no spread, hypothetically, how much can I risk if my stop loss was right here for $200, right? But with spread, it'll be somewhere up here, but you're still entering with the same lot size as if this was the stop loss. So when you doing the market order, you have your stop loss here, but as soon as it hits this level, you eg exit the trade yourself. And it should be around the uh, the risk that you want. But you still need to put the stop loss in case price just jumps up and stops you out. Now you will lose a little bit more than you're willing to lose based off your risk. But if you follow the Omni model enough, you'll get it back eventually. But that is also why I kind of stay away from Forex comes to scalping because of the spread. 
You can also always wait for optimal trade entry. So that will kind of help with the spread as well. Um, not entering at equilibrium, just waiting for optimal trade entry, understanding that there will be times when you do miss the trade because of that. But that's pretty much it for Forex. Told you guys the overall direction I'm looking for on the dollar. It was cool to see the Omni model work, the scalping version in Euro. And then now let's move over to bonds. So let's look at ZB and CN. So I did the analysis on ZB, so I'll do it again on there. They pretty much move the same. So on the daily chart, I was saying how we're coming off of this. Trading lower, we had this imbalance. I wanted to see, are we going to reject this imbalance to go higher or, like we did today, trade through it. So we traded through that imbalance. This is telling me that we are most likely bearish. We are probably very bearish because we left this gap open. So this is like a breakaway gap. So we weekly chart, we trade into the fair value gap on the weekly chart, but on the daily chart, we don't trade into the fair value gap on the daily chart. So the fact that price wasn't even strong enough to get up here indicates that we might see some explosive moves and some large candles to get down into here in bonds and then maybe even get to that low if we close through that. But that is the target. Oh, let me draw it better. That's the target that I'm looking at for bonds. And then we traded into this breaker right here. Right, so that's the that we traded into. So we can use the breaker standard deviations to try and see where an exact target can be. So right here, I would be content with enough as soon as we hit that level right there. So we'll leave this on our chart until either it proves that we're wrong and goes all the way higher and gets above this down close candle or until it hits that target. But that is what I'm looking at for bonds. That is a full two points which is a lot in bonds so a lot of room for that let's look at intraday price action and it's just been heavy that's the one thing about bonds is that when it's trending it is trending and consolidate might have a manipulation move so let's take this off take that off so it'll consolidate might have a manipulation move and then go lower but if it doesn't consolidate or if it doesn't have that manipulation move it's just going to tank lower like how we see here so consolidation, a little manipulation move, tank lower. Consolidation, just tank lower. So bonds um, tends to have the least of manipulation. So we already went through our target on bonds. Now let's go to crude oil. So crude oil, you can see all the trades that I took and every single one of these was a loser. So what was I looking at in crude oil? Well, first let's talk about the direction of where crude oil might be going. So let's delete some of this stuff. So ignore this line. This is actually, I could take it off. So this is the range that we are working within. So last 20 days from here for last 40 days, I'm sorry. So the last 20 days, there isn't a swing higher low. So we go out to the last 40 days and we have this high to that low equilibrium's right here. So what did we trade up into today? We traded up into this balanced price range. However, I was talking about yesterday in crude oil. Because this balance price range is in a discount still, I was still I was price wanted to reach up to equilibrium. So that is why I, you're gonna see I took a lot of longs today. I took a couple shorts, but also longs too. I think I took I'm not sure actually to be honest. We're gonna get into it. But I was trying to see, I was going with the bias that price was going to trade to equilibrium. Wow, that was hard to say. So we have the balance price range here. Where could price go going forward? So I still feel like price may still come back up to equilibrium. We will most likely, unless somehow we just pume, we'll have a fair value gap within this range right here. So we'll have a fair value gap within this 20 to 30% range. It's also within a breaker because we take out these highs, go lower to take out these lows. So all of this is a breaker on the daily chart. So we will have a fair value gap breaker within the 20 to 30% range. So I want to see how that fair value gap respects price. Do we trade through it? If we trade through it and close through it, then yeah, we're probably going to use that inversion gap and make lower lows and just go directly for here. Especially if the dollar 
is extremely bullish and starts to make large range candles for its highs, then this could make large range candles for these lows. But time will tell. I'm still bullish until proven otherwise in crude oil. So let's go to intraday or let's go to a 12 hour. So you can see we'll have imbalances here on the 12 hour chart that we can trade up into on a four hour basis. We have this imbalance down here that price can trade up and trade down into and not have to take out this low. That is a potential. However, that would mean that it would go beyond this breaker. So if we do make that ideal, you want to see price get back above this breaker, go back into it and then go higher in these up close candles as well. But let's get into the trades that I took. That's probably what you want to see. So going to a five minute chart and I'm going to delete this balance price range. So going to a five minute chart and showing you the executions, all of the damage was done within, let's say, 910 candle to 925. So I'll say most of the damage was done within 15 minutes. <laughs> it can happen fast, especially when you're in that mode and you're on tilt and trying to get your money back and all that. You can blow an account fast. No, I did not blow my account, but you could blow an account fast. So we ran out sell side here. Or actually, let's let's rewind to the beginning of the day so you can see where my mental was at. So if I go, I'm going to go out and go to my other account because there's one trade that I took in my other account that you're going to see why and it's not a good way to think but why I was on tilt so I was measuring from this high to this low and remember on the four hour chart or let's go to a nine hour chart it's easier to see on the nine hour chart we have this breaker here so this is just a smaller refined level of that daily breaker so we have the breaker here on the nine hour chart. That's why I have this label as nine hour breaker high. So that's the breaker I'm looking at. And it's also within a fair value gap. So going back to the five minute chart at this time up here, this is the trade I want you guys to focus on at this time up here. We haven't hit the nine hour breaker. So I'm expecting price to trade lower into the nine hour breaker and then wanting to see if it wants to go higher. So I'm trying to like catch both sides. If I can today, obviously it just melted the whole day. But at this time, I didn't know that all this would happen. So I sold short up here. I'm going to go to a 15 second chart. So you can see exactly where I sold short. A very great entry. So I sold short here inside this gap right here. So I sold short here. And my stop loss, and this is why I love futures, was right here. This is my stop loss. And my take profit, so going out to a five minute chart, my take profit was this nine hour breaker. The risk to reward ratio on that was 15. I was literally about to pass my funded account with this one trade. So it was a 15 hour trade, 46 points, and I was in for three contracts. So I guess I wouldn't have technically passed my account with top step because you have to follow the 50% rule. But you can see this was a very big trade. And then I got scared out of the trade. So 15 second chart going back. I literally got scared out of the trade in this candle and then Pume, it just tanks and goes straight to target. So this happens and I'm mad about the trade and then the damage occurs. So what I was looking at was measuring from this high to this low. So we had just taken out this liquidity right here. So we took out that low and let's cancel the executions for now. Take that out, take that out. Just taken out this low. So I was seeing is price going to retrace Come back up to equilibrium of what the range was at the time and then go up, go up to the breaker high. That's what I was looking at. So if we measure from this high to this low, find 20 to 30 percent of the range. Boom. We have this right here. This is only a five minute chart. So this is a breaker taking out this swing low, going higher, take out buy side and then go lower. So we have this swing low right here. That's a breaker. So one of the rules that we follow is if. We are going to trade against the breaker then it has to close through it on a one minute basis. So go to a one minute chart, find it. So normally this is how I would do it, right? But I actually learned something today and I'm going to teach it for the first time. It's the first time I've ever, ever, ever talked about this. I just simplify it to this. This is the last down close candle. And then we clearly close above it, right? This will also be my reclaimed order block because it's within the 20 to 30% of the range, these red lines, it's within that. So 
Boom, measure optimal trade entry. We clearly come to optimal trade entry. We start the rally. We have this down close candle. I was treating that like a bullish order block. So I went long right here, treating that like the order block went long here. And then clearly I was stopped out. So put the executions back on. Oh, actually, I forgot about this trade. So I took one trade that was just completely against my model. So we'll get back to this. So first, I was just so mad about this trade. I was like, all right, when we come back up to this breaker, like I want to see if it wants to start going lower and I'm going to take the short to go to the nine hour breaker high. However, that does not follow the Omni model at all. And I deserve to take this loss. So I took that loss and then I took this loss. So I bought in here and then I ended up getting stopped out here. Boom. And then after that, I'm using, so I'm using the same logic. I have the reclaimed order block. And after I get stopped out, I see that we just wick through it. The bodies don't trade up um, below it. So now all I'm doing is using that same order block again here. I see that we close above it. So I'm trying to buy within that order block and then I clearly get stopped out. So boom, that's three trades where I get stopped out. All stemming really from this right here. So majority of, so this one's definitely stemming from this. These two, as I'm about to teach you, was kind of a lack of knowledge, but also a little bit of anger was still in me because of missing this amazing move. And I'm sharing this with you guys. So you guys don't make the same mistakes as me and I'm human. I'm probably going to make similar mistakes again in the future. However, I have to make sure that I limit that as much as possible. So why, what did I learn about losses because every single time i take a loss or have a day like this i somehow get like much better insight so low-key days are like pivotal for your growth so this is the reclaimed order block i was using right however if we measure the range of the entire order block and we find the 50 percent line of the order block notice how the bodies don't account for 50 percent of the entire candle range like mean threshold is below them in this case or outside of the bodies. So what I've deemed as an order block going forward in my trading, and we're gonna see if I'm right or I'm just trying to overthink my loss. And sometimes you just take losses that could be the case, but I have a strong feeling that from now on, what I'm going to do with my order blocks is if the body don't account for at least 50% of the candle, meaning mean threshold is not within the bodies, then I'm not classifying that as an order block. So if that was the case, if I was using that logic, the next reclaimed order block would have been here. This would have been the next reclaimed order block on the one minute chart. Because we're not using this low, so we go to the next swing low that was taken out, which is this one right here. So now if we go out, back out, when we can come back down, now notice we have closed outside of the real reclaimed order block. So when we had this rally above, with a rally above and then retracement, I wouldn't have taken this trade because we closed through it, if that makes sense. And then moving on to this trade, I wouldn't have taken this trade because this low was taken out and it shouldn't have been taken out. So what? remember what I like to look for is an optimal trade entry. So like for this example, it was optimal trade entry. Boom, come in, start the rally higher, give another optimal trade entry on the smaller time frame, and then continue higher. So in this case, it would be optimal trade entry. Boom. So right here would ideally be optimal trade entry, but notice how one outside the reclaimed order block two, we haven't closed through the reclaimed order block also. And then three, it takes out the low that would have been the stop loss for optimal trade entry. So this entry would have never happened and happened. And then obviously this entry should have never happened because it doesn't follow the model at. So that is why in the beginning of this very long video that I said, my losses or my negative day was not due to the model itself not working. Rather, it was due to me not executing the model properly. So we had one trade here, which is the only trade of the day in, um, in the crude oil futures. And then also, I was watching this. I didn't execute on this, but this is actually what made me realize the thing about the order block. So. I was watching price. Let's go to a five minute chart. Actually, we go back to a one minute chart. So I was watching price and as it started to make lower lows, I was just extending this, right? So I was extending that. And then let me let's take that away. So I was just measuring from the high to the low, trying to find a reclaimed order block. So boom, no reclaimed order block. 
then here, no reclaimed order block. And then we have here, let's get it to it, boom. So what I was looking at was we had this swing low prior to the run up. So I'm looking at the last down close candle. I'm like, okay, this is a reclaimed order block. This is before I had the, the epiphany, if you will, the order block, the bodies must account for at least 50%. So I was looking at this as the reclaimed order block within 20 to 30%. We close above it right here. We clearly have an optimal trade entry that you can even see on a one minute chart. Boom, from this swing low to that swing high, drops down. Imbalance right here, we trade up higher. Above this, down close candle, right here, down close candle. So then now we just measure again from low to high. We have an imbalance, optimal trade entry. I the old me prior to a couple hours ago. Would have bought here, went higher, and that would have been another loss on the day for me. But however, if we now implement the new rule, measure the order block, mean threshold is down here. It's clearly within the wick, not within the body. So that would not account, or that would not count as a reclaimed order block. So now the reclaimed order block that you would use. So we had this swing low, the next swing low is right here. So this would be the reclaimed order block right here. And we clearly don't close above it. We hit it, treats it like a breaker, and then continues to tank lower. And then one last thing, because I didn't fully review the actual trade that was the good trade of the day. So this one right here, that trade. If we go to a five minute chart, or we can just use the one minute chart. I don't have to keep going back out. And we use the range that we were looking at. So this was the low of the day right here. So measure from the low to the high, we have 20, 30% right here. And if we look, we have this reclaimed order block right here. So it was an order block, fails. And by fails, I mean it just closes through mean threshold, takes out the high, trades lower. We have optimal trade entry, clearly on the one minute chart from low to high. We have optimal trade entry when we trade up into it right here. So then after the optimal trade entry, we start to break down and we can do it again. So from this high why am i picking this high because the bodies never close above the high yes we open above it but this candle closes still down here so not above the high so we can use this high down to these lows and optimal trade entry is 80.46 and then the high of these candles is 80.46 so right there there goes your entry with the second there goes your entry and then lastly on the one minute chart we also have this breaker here, right here. So for this entry, we haven't closed below the breaker. Even for this entry, we haven't closed below the breaker. But then we closed below the breaker here, which is why I entered here. But then I got stopped out thinking, hey, it could run these highs one more time. So my stop loss was this high right here. So I was like, it can run these highs one more time, fill in the breaker, and then go lower. Got scared out the trade, stopped. Uh, closed it and then we can see what happens so that is it for bonds and i will see you guys tomorrow thursday may 30th i hope you guys found this video insightful and what i talked about with order blocks we're going to test it going forward and we'll see as a community if this is a good theory or not but i've never talked about it before this is something i literally learned today and i wanted to share it with you guys so i'll see you guys in the next video